so glad to have you join me today um, this tutorial that we're gonna be working on is pretty much just centered around a few things one the most exciting part is we're gonna be diving out of blender and doing some layout stuff what does that mean we're gonna be working within Figma um, set up some nice layouts with some things that we built in blender it's gonna be a bit of like an abstract poster kind of design piece I'm kind of just testing the waters with this I don't see too much uh, too many people talking about this and I think, hey, why, why gatekeep uh, this knowledge? So let's go ahead and dive right on in and we're gonna mess with this. So, see you soon. All right, so this is a bit of, we have a bit of tutorials together now. So I would say I'm gonna keep this one fairly quick. Honestly, this, this design is super easy. I would say the layout part is a little bit of a more difficult one. So let's dive in. So first things first, always kind of delete the default objects. We want to get a fresh setup. Um, let's go ahead and create a cube. We're going to go ahead and, and grab that cube, G. Let's bring it up on the Z axis, press Z if you've forgotten. And now we're going to scale it a bit of like a rectangular, but S and then you press Z so you can scale it just on the Z axis. I can do this. It's really dependent on you on the shape, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Now. <clears throat> now we want to make it a little bit like wacky you know we want this to be kind of wacky so I'm going to show you how we can make things wacky so go ahead and go to deform displace and click new then you're going to click these little pills and now from here def the deform uh, modification is quite interesting because you get kind of like you get a lot to play around with it looks like it maps with um, Oh, I forgot one thing. You're going to want to press tab, right click, subdivide. We want, and then subdivide it again, subdivide it again. Now, <clears throat> when you mess around with it, you can see that it's kind of like mapping to the textures. I've never really played too much around with this, but you can see we get some interesting kind of things to play with. And it's all up to you, I think, honestly, at this point. But what I'm going to do for the tutorial is we're going to go ahead and bring up a cloud. Um, let's, let's make it, let's see what grayscale is like, uh, no, let's do color, no, cloud, color, let's play with the size a little bit, let's make it a little bit crazy, I like, we want, we want to give it a little bit of like, depth, look at it, it's looking kind of nice in my opinion. If you want, you could push your computer and subdivide it one more time, and when there you get a bit more of like this, um, <clears throat> a little more detail. I personally am going to leave this for the sake of what we're working on today. I think this is good. I have the size to around 1.1. If you want it to be even smoother after that, you can mess with the strength. You can get really crazy. You can even animate this. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it at one though. So shade it smooth. Now we get this like kind of like blobby kind of shape, which <clears throat> is perfect. Now the second step, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do something called UV mapping. Now this is projecting an image onto a shape. We have a pretty simple shape right now, so let's keep it um, let's keep it simple with the UV mapping because we only have four sides. So what you're gonna do is click that like top left hand corner UV editor and what we're gonna also do is horizontal split and we want to open up the shader editor <clears throat> I'm gonna create a new material now you saw I had a picture of 21 Savage this you could have any picture you want at this point it's really up to you but I suggest it being a picture of a person if you want to kind of get what I've been working on here so I'm just gonna go ahead and take that JPEG file and just kind of drag it in to this drag it into the node editor you're gonna go ahead and attach it to the color now if you do material preview you can kind of see like <laughs> what's going on here we have um, we have 21 Savage or whatever artist or picture you have <clears throat> it's just mapped all over the place. We want to make sure that we want to see the face So what you're gonna do here is press tab and now you can kind of see like okay, we have this huge image here 
UV mapping is something I'm not a particular expert in, but I'm gonna just tell you the tricks that I know. So thankfully we're working on just a four-sided shape. What I like to do is, you know, let's look at the front only, right? And you just hold down with your mouse. You just wanna select, oh, switch to faces. This face is like a lot easier to mess with. Now you see the faces that you have selected here are not gonna appear in the UV editor. If you essentially select select the same face, essentially press G, same kind of controls, G to grab, R to rotate. I'm just gonna grab and R rotate, and you can kind of see it change if you're in the material editor. And you can even scale if you want to like duplicate. We want to get really close in because you know it's kind of just like, like this interesting right about there. Just like that, we have one side. Let's go ahead and select these faces. Wait, we want to make sure we just have those faces selected. Just like this, drag on here, scale. Make it a little smaller, make it a little bit interesting. You could just do this too, to be honest. Click those buttons. It's going to kind of fast forward through this. I don't know why that one came out so dark. Hmm. Beats me. Let's go ahead and let's get one of his highs. All right. Uh, screw the bottom parts. Really don't care. If you do, what you can do is just like. Uh, hmm. Screw the bottom parts. Now if you press tab again, now you have your shape kind of uh, set up once again. And okay, and <clears throat> now you're probably wondering, okay, Micah, like we need to export this, right? Like once you find the angle you want, I personally just set front, move it a little bit, you know, get a little bit of depth. You want some depth. When you click render, just a dark scene, right? So what I want to use is I'm going to go ahead and link an HDRI uh, website. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pull an HDRI environment texture. And that's kind of cool. Uh, open it up your folder. Find where you downloaded your HDRI. I'm going to, like I said, link the site. Just pull one out real quick. I personally think having an HDRI that, you know, it's pretty bright, might do you the best. So I have this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just move it a little bit. Let's install the camera to our view. Let's pull that camera back. Let's go ahead and we don't need to see this anymore. So let's view our camera here. Uh, let's make this rendered. Let's pull this back. Let's pull this back some. What a beautiful HDRI. It's Christmas. <laughs> and what we can do is you can honestly. Let's take our camera. Let's make it a square. I'm gonna give it some. I'm gonna have enough space here. And what you can honestly do is just uh, rotate. You just rotate it. about there looks about fine and if you render it now you're gonna get the whole background so we have to get away from that so let's just turn on ambient inclusion boom screen switch fractions go over to film this is the important step transparent now you also want to increase the roughness on here because you you could have this like whoa that's kind of cool actually hey make it look kind of like jelly but I think it'll be different depending on uh, you know, increase the metal. It looks really demonic. Um, it's different depending on the HDRI. You're gonna get a reflection. And some reflections won't look all that cool. So let's just keep it pretty basic. So what we have now is a pretty decent shot. Um, you're going to want to go over to your render output 
stuff, which is, if you forget, output properties. PNG, here's the important part. PNG, you want the alpha layer to be on. And from there, you're okay. You're just gonna go ahead and, you know, select where you're gonna render this. So I have a nice little folder set up going on here. I'm gonna call this tutorial render. Okay. And then you're gonna go over to your render and render the image. And then And then what you're going to do now is you're going to click image and then save. And then from there you'll have your PNG and I'll catch you over at, on Figma. Okay, <clears throat> now we're on Figma. Now if any of you haven't heard of Figma before, Figma is primarily used as a bit of a UI design program, but a lot of people are um, utilizing it for just think of simple graphic design. We're not playing around with Photoshop filter layers and things like that. We're just doing base overlays, simple colors, simple shapes. And I think this works out wonderfully for um, layout stuff. So like posters, we can't import any animation in here. So I'm gonna keep it simple for this one. Now, okay. So I'm gonna show you kind of like where my finish, my finished kind of thing came out at. I made four different variations. I'm going to go ahead and just take you over how I made those. But the core of this all is kind of just like setting up the layout and I'll show you kind of how to set up a grid, um, set up, you know, some, some rulers for Instagram because things do get cut off. And I'll also link the Figma stuff um, as well for you to take in. So first things first, we're going to start off by making an artboard. Now, Instagram, we're going to keep it 1080 by 1350. And what that does is gives us more of a portrait kind of view. I'm just going to name this main artboard. And what you're going to do now is where you exported your, I'm just going to call it our 21 Savage uh, kind of design, our 21 Savage 3D placement. I'm just going to go ahead and pull mine in. Okay, so now we have mine in here. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the grid kind of layout. Just click layout grid, click here, columns. I mess around with like 10. Instagram, you know, there really isn't too many rules. And then to make sure you know what's in the default Instagram kind of preview, 1080 by 1080 square and you go ahead and press shift R create some rulers I don't really need to know what's centered or not and to disable and enable if you're on a PC it's control shift 4 I'm not too familiar with the Mac one right now at this moment but you can find that up in you go to the view and then from here, you can see the layout grids. So now that we have this, we're gonna wanna go ahead and bring in, I like to personally like, uh, let's see how big we want this to be. So press K to scale, let's just kind of scale it right out there. You can just kind of like rotate it a little bit, give it a little bit of depth. And then we're gonna lock it. Now we have our <laughs> kind of like random 3D object we got going on here. And I believe, all right, Moral Defeat presents Aesthetic Showcase. So let's just go type Moral Defeats as Aesthetic Showcase. Now it's kind of small, right? So if you click your artboard and press Shift 2, you kind of see 100% of the view. I'm going to bump mine up by quite a few. Uh, let's bring back up our our layout grid. We can play around with this. Name this like this. Just make it take up like two columns. Oh, we can make it even smaller. Okay. I wanted to bold this. You can use any type you want. 
kind of I like to keep it pretty simple. And the TM, I'm just gonna you're gonna have to go on the web, just kind of copy that, or you can head over to the Figma link. It's up to you. And we're just gonna give it a little more space, just so we can. I can't even spell aesthetic. S M H. <clears throat> so now we kind of have this like header kind of element. In terms of the blocks, let's do the top part first. So you have this header element. You want it to like everything will come together towards the end, but we have a little bit of our header and now we're going to add in the two other big components of this flyer. And that's a bit of like this, I would say like core text you could put, come to the show, etc. And then you want to have like the date. So let's go ahead and copy this over by clicking and alt dragging and let's call it <clears throat> the case for silence. And let's just take it from bold to regular. And let's take it from being centered to left align, a little bit bigger. It's kind of cool, huh? Let's activate that again. And we want it to kind of be interesting. What did we write originally? The noise of being. Hmm. Right, that the noise of being now. It's very interesting. My original mock. What was my layout? Grid 12, 10. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, I see now. Let's make this a bit tinier. I want to give it some depth. A bit tinier. I want to be a little bit centered. What you could do if you want to get playful, you can like essentially hide some of it, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. So where we go, we have kind of like some text and center it. So it's a bit centered. You can make at this point, it's, a lot of it is creative direction. I would say you can make it smaller and be really weird kind of, you can make it bigger. If you want, you could you could duplicate it by just command B again. And you can just like kind of whoa, it looks kind of cool, huh? And at that point, we kind of lose our three D object that we built out, but it's really up to you. So the second part now is let's bring down this text, center it. We're gonna go ahead and make it centered again, and then we're gonna put in a random date, so twelve uh, oh four. And we don't need to put the year because if it's a post run, it's going out this year. So this year, you make it pretty big. We want it. We want you want a piece of the element to just kind of pop out. There we go. You can just kind of bring it in. It's just cleaning up my my folder structure. Then you can bring another piece of text, make it a little bit smaller. And this is what we're gonna write the full date and the location. So you can put 12. A lot of the stuff with poster design is just filling up spaces and making it look creative. 20, 2024, you can get as creative as you want and then you put Los Angeles, California. Put the whole thing if you want. There we go, Los Angeles, California. It's kind of big. So let's scale it again. I don't really play too much with making sure the type is like specific numbers sometimes when doing graphic design and like poster design because it's not like product design where it's like you know a developer's gonna make it it's just purely graphical and what you're trying to play with more a lot or less is just the scale of things here so now we have this we have kind of like this um decent kind of poster and you're wondering like okay well it looks okay, but it feels like it's missing something. And what that is, is there's a lot of white space going on here. We want to fill that up. It doesn't have to be necessary materials, but it would be helpful materials to complement the design. 
So let's take our little subtitle kind of thing, and what we're gonna do, you could duplicate that. I have some a bit. I found like an article. I just like copied and pasted some some sort of text because it's not a real design. And then what I did was you could just make it a little bit bigger. And there you go. You have like this. Let's just check our layout grid real quick. What I think is to fit in our layout grid because this is simply not a real client piece of work. You can just delete stuff and then bring that down. Wait, mm. interesting, interesting. It's a little bigger. So now we have a bit of some sort of layout. We want to add little elements as well. So what we're going to do here is create a bit of like this cross thing. So you make a quick little rectangle. So make sure the numbers are even. Click and hold. And once you click the object and you go over to like a bit of like the corner, you'll get a little rotation thing. If you hold down shift, you can rotate it evenly. And we just kind of do that. And then we're going to make it black, zero, zero, zero bit tinier. You don't want it to be too big. And we're just gonna at this point you're kind of just free just like freely kind of putting it there. 32 and then click hold alt click and drag and hold shift. Just kind of drag it down. And then you press control D duplicate that action. Click all three. Group it. Here's where the magic is kind of made. And bring it Make sure it's about 32. If you hold Alt, you can see your measurements. You want it to align. Click these two. Press like uh, press two on the keyboard, and that'll bring the opacity down to 20%. I like to group them. Control G. Now I'm calling them crosses. And the last kind of part is now we have a bit of this like section that we can toss in some text. And hey, you know, events are sponsored by some people. So I put a uh, small dude. Let's bring it down a lot. We don't want this text to be too readable, but we just want it to complement the design. So we can do sponsored. Oops. Sponsored by. You type in. Sponsored by uh, Hype Beast Gucci. And some other brand. Off white. Make it left aligned. Bring it right about there. Bring it up. Mm, let's kill this. Gucci's not that cool, anyways. Now, what you can do is you can kind of like make it all fit in one kind of row, and you get this like fun. Kind of fits the column and it kind of matches. I like it so far. Now the third part is bringing in a bit of a background. So from here, if you're happy with it, you can add little symbols here and there. But we're gonna keep it pretty basic. You can play with the color. I think the red is kind of cool. Um, so you can just duplicate it. The pixels are free. That's one thing I heard a long time ago. Press Control D, duplicate, and you make it red. And then what you can do, nice thing about Figma, you can see over by selection colors on the right hand side, all the black layers are essentially, you can control the color. So if you made it red, you can make it red. Um, if you want, you can throw in an uh, image background. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in a bit of a dust layer that I had, and I'll include that in the Figma. You bring in a dust layer, and then just send it back. I know I'm moving a bit fast here on Figma. I know some of my audience are designers, but let me know if you're enjoying this Figma kind of content. I can definitely expose this to plenty of uh, I think this is looking kind of cool the dust layer and then what we can also do I know we mentioned briefly what if we took it and kind of just like 
rotated it. Huh. I'm just kind of free like eyeballing it. It's looking kind of interesting, huh? Just this little rotation. It's kind of cool. Uh, but I think this is kind of what we have now. Now, if you want, I can make another tutorial later on about how to import like this poster into Blender and like mock it up. But I think we have something. We have different layouts. You can really experiment here. It's to your own being. But things you want to remember are like you have your kind of uh, title like header you have some sort of like credit i think these pieces always look cool when you have like an announcement who is it from and then like some text and then like a date and then a little bit of like some playful elements you can even bring in more symbols to play with it or you can even start uh importing like a motion piece and then that has a bit of photoshop but nevertheless um this is where we've landed now we've finished and i hope that you know you found some sort of usage from this. Let me know in the comments below um, if you want me to explore more things like this, but nonetheless, thank you once again, and I'll see you around.